Welcome to Syntax. On this Monday Hasty Treat, we're going to be talking spooky stories. <laughs> yes, folks, it is time for our annual spooky story episode. Oh my gosh. Where we're going to be talking web development spooky stories. We have rounded up some of the best spooky stories from our community. Maybe you dropped the database. Maybe you sent a test email to one million people. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking all about those things in this episode. But if your code is spooky, you best believe you need Sentry at Sentry.io. Sign up and get two months for free. Wes. Spooky. Wes. Uh, Bones Boss. What's up, my dude? <laughs> this is one of my favorite episodes. We do two of them every single year where you submit your spooky stories of just the most put your head in the sand stories of web development. Um, and they're awful in the time, but I'm glad that we can laugh about how it went and also learn a lot about how to like not get into the situations that these folks are in. If you have your own spooky story, go to syntax.fm forward slash spooky and pop it in there. We collect them all year round. And then once a year for Halloween, we read them. Um, I'm going to have to take this mask off because it's just, it's <laughs> cutting into my eyes. Uh, I can oh, imagine. Man. It does not oh, look comfortable. Uh, that hurts. Yeah. Um, can you use favicons and URLs like as a URL path path name? Or uh, not favicons, emoji? Emojis. Uh, you can, to a certain point, be they to get converted into what's called punny code. I mm-hmm. own a domain name that is just a do. one a one yeah. letter Unicode. But yeah, you, you can put them. Like I have a fav.farm and yes. you can do forward slash any emoji and that turns it into an SVG or PNG and serves it up as a fav icon. So you certainly can. Yeah. So we should do that. We should have a little ghost emoji. You could. Yeah. Slash that sounds ghost. like an annoying. That sounds like a fun <laughs> joke that will be a pain in the ass to have to support for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's right. the best kind of fun joke here. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's get yeah. into the first question. Some of these stories are longer. Some of them are just one or two sentences. Um, we are keeping everybody anonymous for the sake of nobody getting in trouble. Um and uh, it, there's a couple where we're able to say the company or at least tell you what we think it is. So the first spooky story is needs a coffee. I made a website for a very big company selling coffee all around the world. It was a website promoting an online game where people could win a trip. In other things, the minimum prize for a coupon was 20 cents off a pack of coffee. There was a QR code on every pack of coffee, millions of it sold around the country. So this is, this is pretty big. I was in charge of back and front end and I was supposed to connect to an API to generate coupons and send them to email to people who played the game. Supposed to, interesting. We launched the campaign and everything seemed to be going well. Client was happy and so on. After a few weeks, the client called and said a customer was complaining he didn't receive his coupon. Hmm. I went to the source code to check what was happening and I looked at my send coupon email function. Oh no. It was empty. Totally empty. I forgot to code it. Client was mad. We sent the coupons weeks late to thousands of people and got some very angry messages in response. I never sweat so much in my life. Yeah. You didn't think the test that it actually sent an email? Sometimes, Wes, you just think, I already did that. I already did that. (laughs) Has that ever happened to you where you're just like, all right, now that that's done, and then you move on yeah. to the next thing, and you're like, oh, it's half done. You didn't even <laughs> really get there. That's that's kind of how I work sometimes. Just put a to-do uh, in there. Yes. Oh, man. That is actually one of the big reasons why I started. I know people poo-poo to- to-dos. They poo-poo to-dos. But I have started just littering my code with to-dos anytime that I'm mid-project, just so yeah. I do a command F for to-do before I push anything, and then make sure... Uh, there is nothing that needs to I know that's a whole controversial thing about that in general, but hey, I, I like to do's for that. <laughs> All right, this next one is uh, from the founder and ex CEO of GitHub. This one is straight from Twitter. It was a gorgeous Sunday morning. Birds were chirping and squirrels were swirling. Coffee in hand, I began upgrading GitHub's testing infrastructure. When I was done, I ran a quick test and deleted the entire github.com production database. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, oh, this might be the man. spookiest ever. Yeah. I, there's been some spooky ones. There was a lot of things that went wrong. Our tests should not have had access to production. Yeah, that's that's one. Our production DB shouldn't have been wipeable. Two, we should have been able to restore the DB faster. We should also have known our events table would be a doozy. Man. But the main thing that went wrong, our GitHub application assumed it was running in production mode unless told otherwise. When I ran my tests, I forgot to set the test environment, so a connection was established to the production database, which was promptly deleted. Oh, ah, that's a good I way remember. to put it. Yeah. Assume, don't assume production by default. No. That's a good yes. tip. That is a good tip. Always assume either that it won't work or that it's connecting to a local or something. Yeah. I remember exactly where I was sitting in my apartment next to Dolores Park. The test ran quickly at that point. So when I started my test and it just hung, I immediately knew something was wrong, but I thought it was a connection issue. Huh, I thought that's weird. Only when I visited github.com seconds later did I realize how bad things were. Nothing worked. As I explained in the blog post, we always wiped our test DB before running tests. Turns out people don't want their data wiped on a Sunday morning for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who was around helped out, but our Dojek really saved the day by quickly restoring the DB and punting on the events table. We also immediately locked down production so it wouldn't happen again. My main takeaways, don't let anything access production except production. Save server upgrades for the weekday when your team is working <laughs> so they can help you. Uh, it's a whole don't apply for oh, anything. Man. Test deleting and restoring data regularly and for it can happen to you. Yeah, if a it is funny whenever I, I do have a database and I need to do something, you know, major on it, whether that's a migration, even though it's not that major, but still a yeah. migration or something where I'm modifying the database. I always make sure I click back up to like a rollback type of situation. I know that's a smaller scale than GitHub, but like for me personally, yeah, that is a, a fear of mine. So I'm always, always be that's backing up. And, yeah, it's yeah, something sure. very poetic about GitHub having lost data you know <laughs> the truest sense of it can happen to you for sure next one we have here is called rejected i once sent fifty thousand people an email saying thank you for your application but we decided to move forward with someone else most of them didn't even apply <laughs> those are awful because you can't stop it once you send fifty thousand emails you're gonna get three, four, 5,000 emails back being like, what's this about? What's going on? You know? And even if you send up a follow-up, hey, sorry, that wasn't meant for you. You're still, you just cannot stop it. And the poor support people are just going to be slammed for days. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that stinks. I, I may have told this before on the show, but I had applied to Y Combinator Startup School, which was like a yeah. really uh, you got a lot out of that program if you were accepted and they're accepting like 20 people or something and they did that uh but it was the opposite where they admitted everyone so i got the email oh. saying i was admitted to startup school this was back in the early days of level up tutorials and i oh, was man. so stoked i told everybody in my my house right away i was like really and then sure enough i got the email like 15 minutes later i'm so sorry but we accidentally set that out like that's yeah, that was rough. No, thank you. Uh, if you're rejecting or accepting people for something important, yeah, be extra cautious. Careful with people's lives. Yeah, careful with that. Yeah. Infinite loop. I once sent the same email and text notification to a single user 200 times within a few minutes on both channels. Damn those infinite loops. <laughs> That's a like F you in particular uh, type of move right there. That's hilarious. Oh, that sucks. Uh, uh, next one is my squeal horror. During my first years as a software developer, I had to rewrite a login register form for one of our biggest customer CMS portals. Part of it was the password forgotten page where I implemented a whole submit your email and we reset your password flow. I then went on to write an nice little SQL query to reset the user's password whenever they requested a reset link. 
We released the whole thing and everybody was quite happy, especially me as it was my biggest project to date. After a few weeks, we started getting emails from users telling us they had to reset their password every time they wanted to log into the CMS. I had forgotten the user reference in the where clause it caused a reset page. Every time a user resetted their password, we were actually resetting the password for all users of the company's account. Yes. The, the fix was quickly implemented and deployed. We reset the passwords once again, and everything was fine. Since then, I triple check my where clauses. Whoo, this is awful because first of all, that's a security issue, meaning that you could set reset your password, and then your password is then the password for everybody's account. Yes. Um and like I honestly it's kind of like a a scary part of SQL where if you forget the where, it will literally update every single thing in the database and probably you know, ha we're not going to read all of them but we've probably about half of the stories we got submitted were stories where this had happened someone forgot the where clause yeah classic next one pet company this could also be pet cemetery that's a scary oh name. that, that would have yeah. been a better title i like that that's no, all right forgot a where clause on an update and changed every customer master record to <laughs> redacted large pet retailer <laughs> it was my third day on the job as CIO. I almost got in my car and drove away. Luckily, <laughs> there was another field that had roughly the same information, ran a second update, and told the CEO that the quality of data in their database was very poor. <laughs> and I asked how they ever did accurate sales reporting. It was Started a, a master. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Started a master data management initiative. Wow. <sighs> Spooky. That sucks. It, th those are some of the worst stories we've had over the years where people had to piece things back together with, oh, yeah. all right, what do we have? Like often we've had people go through logs and they've been able to piece it back with logs or some other piece of information They from in another field they've been able to figure it out. But awful, awful. For real. Get corrupted. I once lost three weeks worth of work without noticing. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> three weeks. While using version control, <laughs> the reason I later discovered an automatic rsync backup um, with my NAS was corrupting my Git folder, which wasn't excluded due to a system date set in the future on my NAS. I pushed a remote 10 times a day now. This is this is honestly one of my fears is even if you are Git committing often locally, it's still only local, you know, you, you yeah. push it somewhere else or VS Code now has that like automatic backups, even between commits, you can lose stuff. So scary stuff. Yeah, scary stuff indeed. Next one, circular horror. We had a deploy for the send money app at PayPal where the server memory would spike almost immediately and then restart the server over and over in seconds, hundreds, and then thousands, and then tens of thousands <laughs> of users were affected before we rolled back successfully. After looking at the logs, we found out that someone had left a log of the express request object, which is large <laughs> and has circular references, so it busted our log serialization logic with an out-of-memory error. We added a custom ESLint plugin to prevent that from ever happening again, in addition to handling circular references better. Man. Oh, man. Have you ever logged like a giant object and even your local host is like struggling with it? Yeah. yeah. It chokes. Or even like like some things, if you try to JSON something, like in SvelteKit, if you try to send specific objects back, it catches it and says, that's not a POJO, which is a plain yes. old JavaScript object. But sometimes... Uh, references like objects aren't just data and if you try to serialize json stringify an object that refers to another object and it's circular then you can get into some big trouble there especially when it's you're writing your own log serialization logic <laughs> yeah jeez <laughs> uh man these are great Next one is the haunting of the forgotten MX records. The first one is simple. I moved a client's name servers to my hosting provider and forgot to add the MX records to Google Workspace. I moved the domains right before a holiday and we only found out about it days later after his clients started messaging him, wondering why he is not answering his emails. 
Oof. Two years yeah. later, I had to close the account again, and I forgot to move the name servers. <laughs> it did it again. <laughs> it was a holiday. <laughs> it was a holiday again, <laughs> and it took three days until it was resolved. Both times, the client didn't have the credentials to the registrar, so it took a full day to track down the guy who originally set it up. Oh. Oof. That always scared me when people like move like, oh, we're going to launch our new website. What people would often do is they would just change the name servers of the domain, um, which changes all the DNS management. And if you have anything else on your domain name, like MX records for email or um, SPF authentication for sending one off emails, transactional emails for spam detection, like you can get into some big trouble. I, I once did it where I had moved a domain name and I thought that I had deleted all of their email records. And it turned mm -hmm. out that because I had moved it from their hosting provider to my own and then their hosting provider deleted all the email addresses in the C panel. And I said, oh, crap. And I was I was sweating for a couple hours. And then I realized the latest like we're still getting emails. And I realized, oh, they actually weren't using the cPanel email. They were using external MX records. So thankfully, I was spared there. <laughs> I Yeah, that stuff always freaks me out. I, I know so much of it is not a big deal. But yeah, I email in general, just because I know how tenuous Never it can be. Never want to goof it up. Yeah, between spam and not spam. That that's a, that's a hard 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 task there. <laughs> Man, these these have been this is a good good kickoff, Wes. I'm like pretty stoked about yeah. these spooky stories here. And and folks, if if you if this is your first spooky stories episode, we have a whole hour of spooky stories coming for you on Wednesday. So, we're going to continue the spooky stories in part two of the annual spooky stories episode. And again, if you have any stories of your own, we want to hear them. We will read them on the show next year and share in delight with all of the horrors <laughs> of the things that we do at work all day. All right. We'll catch you in that one on Wednesday. Spooky.